Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Should you apply domain-driven design? Do you need a domain model? Well, you might want to consider it if your domain has a lot of complexity. But then I always get the question, okay, great, but what's a lot of complexity? So I'm going to provide an example by uncovering more and more complexity within a domain and hopefully provide you some insights so you can decide, do you need a domain model? Should you apply domain-driven design? This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. What does complexity actually look like? Well, I'm gonna use the example domain of transportation, and I'm gonna actually start really simply, and then I'm gonna kinda of explain and uncover things that really show the complexity. This is interesting because a lot of times the samples and people show me illustrate different domain models that they're building. Sometimes there is complexity, but a lot of times I just wanna tell them that really isn't that much complexity and you could just be using CRUD. So what does complexity actually look like? Okay, well, let's start with a simple non-complex. So everybody should be able to relate to this. You've ordered something online, you had something shipped to you. So you order something online and it has to get to you. How does that happen? Well, there's a vehicle likely that has to go to some warehouse, some company that has to go pick up the actual freight, your package that you ordered. Notice here, I'm using very specific words. So I'm saying they have to pick up the freight. So the shipper has the item, there's a truck, some vehicle that picks up that freight, it then delivers that to say your house. So at that point, it actually does the delivery. So this is kind of the simplest form of, I have a vehicle that has to pick up freight and deliver freight. So what this looks like is that we have the concept of a shipment. It's gonna be associated to a vehicle. That vehicle is the one doing the actual pickup and delivery. And then we have a pickup location, which is called the shipper. And we have a delivery location, which is called the consignee. So do we have complexity? Well, not really. I am definitely using the language that's a part of the domain. I'm talking about the shipper, the consignee, doing a pickup, doing the delivery, a vehicle, a shipment. I'm all using all that language. But if you were thinking of this in terms of CRUD, what would that mean? Well, you'd likely have an object or a table, however you're persisting data, that would have probably the date times and statuses of that shipment. Could it be CRUD? Yes, what's really not to say that it couldn't be CRUD? You could write this in transaction scripts. There's not much involved here yet. Now let's take this a step further where we actually have to move goods and kind of store them maybe in another warehouse before their final delivery. So that means that when we have our package that's ready to go, we have our vehicle that arrives at our initial warehouse, picks up our actual freight, and then brings it to say an intermediate warehouse where it's gonna then deliver that. Um, and maybe it sits there for a day or two, and then we have another vehicle, say a day later, it arrives at that intermediate warehouse, picks up that freight, and then it's the one uh, going to our final destination and it does the delivery. So now we're picking up a little bit more in terms of complexity. So now you might think of that as we have our shipment still, but instead of having a single pickup to our shipper and delivery to our consignee, instead of having just those two, we could have a collection of them, of those two, those pairs. So we have a pickup delivery pair and we could have many of them. So we could pick up, deliver, pick up, deliver, pick up, deliver, keep going as many times as you really wanted to. Now, as you would with any domain that has a lot of complexity, it goes even further. So now what happens is we have our vehicle, it goes to our shipper to pick up whatever freight it is, but that freight, it might be actually more than one particular package that needs to be delivered to two different or multiple different locations. So that means that we have our pickup occurred, it picked up our freight, but it needs to go to a first location to do one of the deliveries. Then it needs to go to another location to do the other delivery. That means that our freight is actually being split between delivery locations. So now we're getting a little bit more complex where we have our shipment and we have these pickups and deliveries, these collections of them, but we also need to account for the actual freight and what the freight is, kind of the dimensions, the, the weight, and associating that freight to which delivery and pickup it belongs to. So where does this go from here? Well, more complexity, because really I could take that second example and my last example and merge them together, and then what would happen? That means that we have kind of this intermediate warehouse where we could be delivering portion of the freight that we picked up, portion of it could then could be delivered to its final destination at one location, and then maybe we have a complete separate vehicle later the next day or whenever 
pick up that freight at the warehouse, that intermediate warehouse, and then deliver to another location. Now, I won't bore you with the animation, but you get the gist. So what that might look like is that we have a shipment that has legs. And these are what often considered in the industry as kind of these portions, uh, these movements within a shipment. And that has an individual association to a vehicle that's executing it, because it might not be the same vehicle. It could be different vehicles. And then it goes farther down where we have these pickups to deliveries and we're keeping track of the freight for each one of these legs. Now I can keep going and diving more and more into this to explain different use cases, different scenarios that will really get you the gist of how complex this can actually get. But the question is, which scenario are you actually doing in your solution? And what problems are you solving? In that first example where I just had a pickup location and a delivery location, did I need a domain model? I didn't really have much complexity. So what are you trying to accomplish within your solution? If the point of the solution is for efficiency because there's a lot of complexity and how to manage that and you're trying to do it with software, then that's where a domain model and using something like domain driven design and everything around it in terms of strategic patterns and defining boundaries and aggregates and using your language really comes in helpful. So here are some things to think about. Is it really CRUD? Truly, is it CRUD? And what I mean by that is oftentimes when you're providing CRUD, a lot of the workflow and business processes are ultimately lie within the end user in their heads. They're the ones actually providing the workflow. They're deciding, okay, I'm gonna update this particular field this way, and then I gotta go to this record and update it this way. And when then this process occurs, not within the software, I need to go and update or create data. They're actually the ones providing the workflow. That workflow is all within their head. And so as fine as you're with that, and I mentioned the word efficiency, that's not really very efficient likely um, because your end user is the one doing all the work. So if they're fine and your solution is just provide them a way to record this information, then yes, it's just truly crud. Another question is what's the number of capabilities that your system's actually providing? Are you providing a system that basically runs an entire, in this case, transportation company? That's not a limited set of capabilities. However, if you're very narrow in what your solution is or the program, the software that you're writing is for a specific use case that has a limited number of capabilities, let's say a dozen or two dozens, then do you really need a domain model? Maybe not, your software literally isn't gonna be that large. But here's always the difficult question, will it grow? If it starts very small, will it be growing? As I gave the example at the very beginning, maybe that's your actual use case. It's just that simple pickup and delivery. And maybe you just start there where you don't need a domain model, but your system is gonna grow because people are gonna start challenging and adding more features or wanting more features added, which then your complexity grows. And you start getting into the point where yes, maybe you do wanna develop a domain model to start defining boundaries. So the question is, will it grow? Do you foresee it growing? A common misconception is that you need to fit all use cases within one model that you create. It, to me, it's kind of like, in some ways, the 80-20 rule. A lot of times you can fit 80% of your use cases within one model that you develop. In my example of that first one, maybe that's 80% of your use cases. It's just single pickup and deliveries. It's really not that complicated. But you maybe you do later on need to account for all these more complex scenarios. You don't have to take all those complex scenarios and try to shove your existing model to, to force feed it to make it work with all these different other scenarios. You can have more than one model that is basically useful for different contexts from different scenarios. Lastly, it's hard to answer the question, is there complexity or am I about to get into a complex domain if you're really unfamiliar with it or your team is. So you can't really answer the question, is there complexity because you don't know what you don't know. So at that point, you really need to do some exploration about the domain, maybe do something like event storming, get relevant people within a room, talk about the workflow so you can get a real gist of what the solution is, what you're building, and really start fundamentally understanding where the complexity lies and if there is complexity. Should you apply domain-driven design? Do you wanna do domain modeling? It's a difficult question to answer, but if you're thinking about what the system provides, what are the capabilities? Are there a limited set of capabilities? Or is it gonna be a bigger system that's gonna have different logical boundaries that potentially need to communicate with each other? Is it something where the workflow, you're defining workflow within your system and you're removing it from the end user's heads? If you can't answer those questions, 
Maybe it's just because you don't know about the domain enough. You don't know the complexities and the workflows. In that case, explore more, talk to the right people, do something like I mentioned, like event storming to get a better foundational idea of the domain and the situation that you're in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you want to chat with other software developers about software architecture and design and topics like this, make sure to join my channel where you get access to a private Discord server. Check the links in the description on how to join. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.